friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. Today I'm going to teach you a bit of the basics for Adobe. Now if you've been watching my pattern projecting series, you'll realize this is a bit out of order. I probably should have started with something like this. But I took for granted that we all had used Adobe and would know how to do this. And that was kind of a silly thing to think because that's not at all true. And in fact, I figured out how to do this stuff as I went on Adobe and y'all didn't get the benefit of having that whole train of thought. You just saw the end result. So I thought I would remedy that and go back and do a little bit of Adobe Basics and show you the functions that I use most often in Adobe. This is pretty simple. It's going to be a video that I just record my screen on the computer and I'll just kind of go through and show you the functions of the buttons and settings and things that I find most helpful when I am pattern projecting and especially whenever I am using Adobe to adjust my pattern to fit my body. I want to reiterate, anytime you see me use Adobe, I am using the free version. I don't pay for Adobe. I don't pay for the editing software I use to uh, do my videos. I don't have any of the Adobe suite. I use an open source software for editing and I use the free version of Adobe for my pattern projecting. So don't think you need a special version of Adobe. However, if you are trying to use the version of Adobe that's the web version or the version on your phone, it's not going to be the same. This is the desktop version of Adobe. And I'll put a link in the description box to make sure that all of us are on the same page with that. I think it's called DC, but I don't want to just say that and, and be wrong. So I will make sure there's a link in the description box that is the accurate place to find the Adobe that I use. Editing Brandolin hopping in to say, the description box link will take you here and you need the left hand side where it says download now. I also want to tell you that Adobe will try to get you to pay for their services because what company doesn't want to be paid for what they do? But you don't have to pay for anything to be able to do what I'm going to show you today. I'm also one more time going to tell you that I have a Windows PC, so I am showing you on that. All of the Mac functions will be similar, but any shortcuts that I use and sometimes the wording might be slightly different. So you should be able to follow along on a Mac, but it won't be exact. All right, guys, I will show you how to use Adobe now. So the first thing about Adobe is you need to open a pattern in Adobe and you just download your pattern. You can see how to do that on your Google Drive um, in my first video in this series. And then you just open it on your computer. Double make sure it downloads to your computer and you're opening from the desktop so that you're opening Adobe Acrobat Reader DC, not your web browser. But now you've got it here on your computer and you've got your pattern opened. Now what do you do? So there are several functions that we like to use for projector sewing. I'm going to just kind of run through some basic things. So here we have file up in the corner and you can use that to open a different PDF to save this PDF and to print this PDF. That's really all we do out of this. You've also got your recent files that might be helpful. So if for some reason you need to print something, which you have a projector now and you shouldn't have to, you can use that print function there. And you can use that to open files and you can use this to save it so that your notations and everything else that we do in a little bit will be there next time you need to use it. I'll cover that a little bit more later. In edit, you have the very important undo and redo. You also have cut, copy, and paste. And those have the typical Windows shortcuts. Control Z for undo, Shift Control Z for redo, cut is Control X, copy is Control C, and paste is Control V. And that's handy because it's right next to copy and paste, um, but it's not Control P because that's print. You've also got Control A to select all or Shift Control A to deselect all. Very often I use these functions, but I very rarely come up here and click edit and click on it. I almost always do it by the shortcuts or with the mouse. There are, um, the other important thing over 
here is the preferences. That is control K if you want to use the shortcut. So we have a few different preferences that we like to change whenever we are projecting. Um, it's nice to have this fill screen with one page at a time unchecked so that you can go full screen without it changing your, your zoom percentage. And there's a few other things that people like to change. Oftentimes, um, Oftentimes people will want to change their zoom to be their their projector zoom all the time. I don't prefer that. I like to change it every time. That way I can make sure that I'm actually, you know, using the right one. And also because if I open the tutorial to read through the tutorial, I don't want that teeny tiny. I want that to be the normal size. I also use Adobe for several other applications other than sewing. So I don't prefer to have that set. You can, however, change that here. And then you can change your commenting where you're going to have a bigger font size or a myriad of other things that might be helpful to you because commenting is a tool that we are going to use often. So feel free to go through and, and click on all of these different options. What are some things that you can do to help yourself? I clicked this restore last view settings when reopening documents because that helps me to open projector files at the correct zoom without opening everything at the correct zoom. It'll also sometimes choose which layer that is set and leave that open with this allow layer state to be set by user information. So mess with this. Click something and see what happens. And if it's terrible, undo it. That's totally fine. You don't have to keep it that way always. And it's very unlikely that you're going to totally mess something up that can't be undone. Uh, one thing to remember, though, whenever you're doing any of this is to scroll down and click OK rather than Xing out of it because some, some of the things that you change, you will have to make sure that you save it that way. So I'm going to click Cancel because I didn't really want to change anything today. Up here we also have View. Now, the first thing is Rotate View. This is super helpful. I usually do this by right-clicking, but you can use shift Control plus to rotate clockwise and shift control minus to rotate counterclockwise. Whenever you right click, you've only got clockwise as an option. So this is actually a really helpful shortcut, but for some reason it never occurs to me whenever I'm actually projecting. Also, I often only have my mouse over there and not my keyboard, so that's part of it too. Um, page navigation can be helpful, but I very rarely use this. I usually do it in up here. Page display, same thing. A lot of these, the zoom and the tools, these can be helpful, but I like to use them up here, not in this, um, not in this setting. The next one that you really want to know about is full screen mode, which is control L. And I do use the shortcut for that. Sign is not something we do with our, with our patterns. Um, you can open new windows and make sure that you have more than one thing open. Um, so for instance, right now it's showing that I have the peg legs letter and the AO open. And I could switch back and forth between those. But again, I usually do that right here. And then there's the help, which is not something I ever use. Okay, so you can click home right here and that will show you some of your recent documents and it will show you um, basically kind of a landing page for Adobe. I very rarely use that or even see that. And then here are your tools. So you can find that over here. They're all listed right here and you can scroll down to more tools right there or you can click over here to tools. The only tool that I use that you have to go to here to find is measure. And I don't like measure. Measure is very janky for a long time. It would shut down any PDF anytime I tried to use it. I updated and it no longer does that, but it is still very janky. I will use it when necessary, which usually means that I'm recording something on my screen like I am now, and I want you to be able to see my measuring. But if I can get around it, if I can make my zoom percentage 100% and slap a ruler on my screen, I'm going to do that. 
if I can just throw it over onto my projector and put my correct zoom percentage in and measure the projected image, I'm going to do that. I very rarely will use this measure tool unless I'm recording. Comment is the other tool that we are going to use a lot of, but you can find that right here and you don't have to go to the special tool area to find it. The rest of these can be useful for other applications, but we're not going to be using them in projectors. And then here's where you can click on the different um, PDFs that you have open. Right here is where they're going to try very hard to get you to pay for Adobe. You don't have to for what we're doing. All right, let's look at this next bar here, this next toolbar. So save file is one. Now it's not letting me save because I haven't made any changes. If I make a change, let's just randomly do that. Now I can save it. So I'm going to show you what happens when you try to save it. I'm going to save and it's going to tell me save as, and I do want it to save in my leggings folder. And I do still want it to be peg legs add on US letter. That's, that's what it is. I don't want to change the name. So I'm going to click save. And now it's going to say, you already have one of those. Why are you trying to make another one? Well, we want to replace it. We want it to be a new file with the same name. So we're going to say yes. And now we've saved it. And when we open it next time, it will have that automatically highlighted. I'll show you how I did that and get rid of that in a few more minutes. Let's keep going. We also got star this file. You can do this to be able to more quickly find it if you like to use this home function to find your files. I don't. I prefer to keep them in a folder and to click on the pattern that I want and open it that way rather than go through Adobe. This one is where you can save it to the Adobe Cloud and I don't do that. I use Google Drive to save all of my patterns and then it's already in a cloud. I don't need an extra cloud so I'm not going to worry about that. Here's your print function, and again, this is so helpful whenever you are printing a tiled pattern, but it is not important whenever you are projecting. Just for the sake of it, though, I'm going to go ahead and click it, and it takes a minute because it's a big file. It shows up, and you've got all your different options. Um, if you are printing a pattern, you can choose to print it in grayscale or not. You're going to choose only the pages that you need for your pattern. I am guessing here. I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> and I actually told it to print. That's not what I wanted to do. Cancel. Nah, my printer's offline anyways. That's fine. Let me go back and show you what I was going to say. Uh, actually, isn't it page 16? Didn't I use this before? Okay, don't hit enter, hit tab. There we go. Yeah, it was 16. All right, and so that will show just the pages that you need to print. You would also want to choose only the layer you want to print in that's not something you choose in this printing uh, section though. So anyways, you're going to want custom scale 100% and um, then you can print. We're not printing though because we have a projector now. And then this right here, I have never ever clicked this button. What I always do is hit control F because that is useful across all different programs in, in Windows. But when you do click it, it gives you this text box right here. And if you need to know really quickly what your seam allowance is, you can search the word seam and it will show you uh, right here. All your seam allowances are half inch unless otherwise stated. That was helpful, but we don't need that anymore. So let's get rid of that. All right. So here you've got the page up and down button. I can go down a page. I can go up a page. I can go directly to page 16, which is the first page of a pattern. Oh, and I want to go right back up to page one at the top. Easy. All right, here's where we get a little bit more in depth. This right here, this cursor, you can choose that and that will allow you to select things. Now, I mean, it's even letting me select this picture because it sees it as an object. I can't delete it, but I can highlight it or I can comment on it. And yes, thank you. I can also right click and say delete because 
I didn't really need any of that. Right click and delete. This hand right here is super helpful, especially when you are in your projector file. Um, now you can always scroll through. Right now I'm scrolling by using the middle button on my mouse that allows me to scroll. But I can also grab with this hand. See how whenever you click it, he grabs. And then I can drag up and down. Now, that's not super helpful in your tutorial. But if we click over to our projector file and we go ahead and put a higher zoom percentage on there, you can go all four directions now with our zoom. And even though I can still click one of these things, it doesn't quite as easily latch on to the things that you've added. So that is a very handy tool, this little, uh, that was totally unintended. This hand is a very handy tool. Um, and then you can also change your zoom percentage right here. You can zoom out with control minus or with clicking this and zoom in with control plus or clicking that. You can see if you kind of hover over it, it will tell you what the uh, shortcut is for it. Or you could more specifically choose, I can make it really huge or I can make it really tiny, or I can type in the exact percentage that I want. Let's say I want 23.8. I can get 23.8. It'll let you go to that, that tenth of a percentage right there. All right, let's bump it back up to about 75. Um, here's where you can change fit to width, fit to one page, read mode. This moves your toolbar pops it out down here. This is sometimes helpful um, when you're when you're doing your projecting, but I really don't find it helpful. I like all of my things to be right where I want them to be. Here is a tool where you add a sticky note, where you can highlight, where you can sign a document, which we don't do, and where you can edit text and images, which we don't do because our, our designers don't give us the permission to do that. But we don't want to do that, really. We just want to alter things with our um, commenting tools. So we are going to talk about these two tools, but we're actually going to wait until we open our comments to talk about them. Um, this is letting you share a link, which you probably won't have the permission to do because a, a designer will have turned that off, first of all. And second of all, don't. We want to everybody to buy their own patterns and to support our designers. Um, and you can also send it by email, which you may want to do to yourself. Um, but if you will just save it in a cloud, that will be a much easier way to do that. Or you can add a person to it, which again, we've already talked about that. Let's keep our designers in business. Okay, let's look at this left hand vertical toolbar. The first one is security settings. And we can't change them because we didn't create this. So we're not worried about that. The second one is your page thumbnails. That might be helpful if you are looking, you know, for where your first page of patterning is or something, but, um, and then you can click directly on it. But generally, I don't use that. You can create bookmarks if you want to, and, and that's all well and good, but we don't really do that. Attachments are not important to us, but this bottom one right here, if you've been using PDF patterns, you know, is a amazing tool because, here let's go to page 16 so we can see what happens. This is where you can turn on and off all of your layers. And you are then able to have only the size or sizes that you need available. So for instance, if I'm grading between an extra large and an extra extra large, I can see both of those and grade between them. Or if I'm a straight XXL, I can just have that and cut that. So, so, so helpful. And we do that if you're printing for some reason, but especially when we are projecting. We want to make sure that we only see the things that we need to see. It is so much easier when you are projecting to do that. I turned off one too many things. It is uh, very important when you're projecting to be able to see just what you need to see. All right, 
let's look at, so um, more important when you're projecting than when you're looking at the tutorial. You want to be able to close this too so you have as much of this screen as possible. So you just push this little arrow guy and he goes away. All right, let's look at the right hand side. So find tools allows you to search not something I've ever done, but it's there if you need it. We don't export. We don't edit. We don't have the uh, permissions to do that. We don't create a PDF. We do comment, though. Comment is a very powerful tool for what we do. So let's click on comment. And it pops this out. And we don't want to see this. This is just a frustrating thing to have here. So we close that back. And we notice, though, what we really wanted was this comment bar right here. Now we can always close and get rid of that if we want to make sure we have as much space possible to see um, and we don't want to control L, which goes full screen. But when we are using the comment tools, we want this toolbar, we want to be able to see all of these things. Um, you can, uh, it, will some, it will show up right here sometimes and then you, it will have a lot of drop downs for these particular things. I told in preferences, I told my um, Adobe that I wanted it to be its own separate toolbar so that I could see all of these things individually. That makes it much easier to see. And then I've only got change line thickness or text properties as drop downs. That was something I changed in preferences. So here we can add a sticky note, we can highlight text, we can add text, we can have a pencil to draw, an eraser, or we can add specific shapes. And that's where we really get into the nitty gritty of what is super helpful when you are adjusting patterns. Let's start over here. Um, let's open it up over on our tutorial. Because one of the first things I always do is use the highlighter whenever I am choosing the size that I need for something. So you can use the sticky note. You can create a sticky note and type it right here and that will show you what you need to, to see. For instance, I have one right here. You can also add a text box. That's what I've done right here. These are text boxes and you add those by opening a text box and clicking somewhere and then it gives you the space to write. Oops. Or you can highlight what you need. And when you choose the highlighter, right here a circle pops up that will allow you to change what to whatever color you want. You can change the opacity too. So when you want to highlight something, you just go right over the text. I've got, I go where I want to go, I click with my mouse, I drag, and I let go. And now it's highlighted. When I want it to go away, I right click and tell it delete. You can also click it and then hit the delete button, not backspace, but delete on your computer, on your keyboard. Okay, so we've added text boxes, we've highlighted. Let's look at the pencil. The pencil, here, let's go over to the pencil just lets you draw however you want to. I can make any shape I want, but I can't hit shift or control or anything to make a straight line. This only goes where my mouse tells it to and is very flowy and it's very, very hard. I'm going to, here, I'm going to try to trace this trace line, straight line right here. I mean, I have a fairly steady hand and that is very hard to trace. So... Let's hit delete and get rid of that. It can be useful though, um, if you need just like a small curve, that can be useful. But if you're wanting to draw a really long one, you still run into that problem of it's really hard to control. But right here, you can choose which color and you can also choose the line thickness right there. All right, let's look at the eraser. Oh, well, Let's leave something to erase. The eraser will let you 
erase just small pieces of something. So if you drew a line and there's just one part you don't like, you can erase just a little bit uh, with that. Now here I'm clicking and dragging and it's going to erase a lot of it or you can just erase a little bit of it. All right, that stamp is not important. Adding an attachment is not important. But right here, line is very important. Now did you see what it said whenever that pop-up came up? Here, let's make it come back. No, all right. I'm just going to tell you then. So you can draw a line any which way you want. It's going to be perfectly straight when it comes out, but the angle doesn't matter. You can draw any angle you want. If you want it to in here, once you let go, you're going to have to click line again if you want another one. Um, so you can click shift to get only a straight line, uh, a horizontal line or vertical line. It won't let you have all of the crazy angles. It will only do straight vertically and horizontally. That can be super helpful if you want to make sure that you have a very straight horizontal line for something. You can change the color here and you can change the line thickness here. Now something that's a little bit different about the line is that it will have a border as well. And so you, you saw mine was black even though uh, blue is chosen right here. It's because the border is black and I'm not really sure how that all works out. But I could change it, the border there, and then I would have a blue line. All right, let's delete that. <clears throat> You can draw an arrow, um, and that sometimes is very helpful if you really want to draw your attention to something and make sure you remember something. Um, and I've done that before, but it's not something I use super often. I usually, if I want to remember something, I will highlight it instead. You can make a square. Um, that might be helpful for you sometimes, or a circle. I don't ever really use those. Um, and then you can point to something and then add text not directly by it but it will be pointing to that to let you know hey remember that that might be helpful if you have a very small piece that you can't really see the text in it and you want to make a giant thing that says cut to or something like that uh, but generally not something that i use either um so polygons means that you can click it and click a next point and click a next point and click a next point click a next point and click a next point and click back to the top and it's going to create whatever size shape angles that you give it. That can be helpful possibly but what I prefer to do is this connected line. We'll get to that in one second. So um, the cloud is just you're still creating a polygon it's just with a cloudy shape around it. I have not found a use for that at all. I'm just saying. Um, but this connected line is something that is very, very, very helpful. So a connected line, whenever I click it, it will do a straight line out wherever I tell it to go. And when I click it again, it adds another point to that line. And then I can click again and again and again as many times as I want to. And I can go wherever I want to. Clicking, 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 clicking. And this is the easiest way to get a curve. All right. Um, so here I've got a weird shape that I just made. But that's the easiest way to get a curve. This is the tool that I use the most often. So here you can see that I needed to lower the rise of these pants because I'm very short. So in order to do that, I used connected line and I traced the line. So I start right here, go straight where it's straight, turn where it turns, keep my line on top of that line. Um, the more dramatic the curve, the more times you're going to need to click and the closer you're going to have your clicks together. The less dramatic the curve, the more you can kind of keep it a little bit of a straight line. And I get to the end. Now I'm going to click right click and hit complete. Otherwise, it's going to just keep adding parts to my line. 
And now that I've got that line finished, I can see right here where I was a little bit off. I can grab each little node and adjust it just a hair to put it back where it should be. I can also grab it and move it. So I can move it down to the level that I need it to be. I could extend it to make it reach right there if that's the way I wanted to solve that problem. Although it would not be the way I wanted to solve that problem. Um, but you can use this very, very usefully to move any line that's not straight. And, you know, these lines are straight because those are seam lines of a color blocking. But very rarely do we have very straight lines in a pattern. So that is the most useful tool, connected lines right here. And the most important thing to remember is that when you're done, you right click until it completes. If you don't do that here, I'm going to, okay, now I'm done with that. And I, but like, what do I do? I can't, I can't even go choose another tool. I'm sort of stuck until I right click and say, well, complete. That's not even letting me do that right this second. What's going on? I've broken it. There we go. Um, don't know what happened at all. But when I right click until it complete, it's going to finish my line for me. All right, let's delete that and that. And then this right here will collapse my drawing tools and make it where I can't see, you know, it, there's where it has all those drop down menus and everything, but I wanted it to be expanded. So that's super helpful to me. All right, the other tool, and I'll go ahead and show you is the measuring tool. And I have told you already, I hate this tool, but it can be helpful. So the reason it's helpful is that it will measure your digital inches. So I've got this set at 60%. I couldn't stick a ruler on my screen unless I was willing to do a lot of math to figure out the distance between here and here. And I want this an inch down, so I need to know the distance. So I can use the measuring tool, and I can click on one point, and then go down and click on another point, and it's going to measure that distance for me. I can right click and tell it to complete the measurement. And now it's gonna tell me that that's 0.91 inches. So that might mean that I need to turn off my measuring tool, click on my arrow to select, select this line, and I'm gonna use the down arrow on my keyboard to move it down a little more. Whatever you need to do with that. Um, the much, much easier way to do this is to project this pattern onto your cutting surface. Gra put it at the correct zoom percentage so you actually are looking at it in actual size. That zoom percentage that you figured out with your calibration. And work with this pattern the same way you would work with a paper pattern. Get out your pattern drafting ruler and use your mouse to trace things at full size. That makes it easier to get the curves I'm going to delete that. It makes it easier to get the curves because it, it gives you more space to get them right. You know, when it's, when it's small, it's very hard to get all the clicks close enough together to get a nice tight curve. But whenever it's life size, you can much easier, uh, it's easier to fit those nodes where you need them to get the correct curve. Um, and it's just, it's what you're used to doing. And it is so much easier. You can measure exactly where you need things. And, you know, right here, I don't get a good idea of the entirety of my pattern. And if I zoom out to get a good idea of the entirety of my pattern, whoops, then it's all very tiny. And I don't want to trace this curve, like, in sections or having to scroll as I go. So all of that works so much better when it is life size. So that is 100% my recommendation for doing that easily. It's just a little bit harder to film. So because of that, I often film here in this, in this, on this digital screen. Um, so I'm gonna click my hand so I can drag that back. All right, those are all of the important tools that we use in Adobe. I hope you found that helpful. Um, now, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this to close it. 
it's going to ask me if I want to save any changes. This time I'm going to say no because I don't even remember all the things that I did. So I'm going to say no. So uh, this time I'm going to tell it yes one more time and take you through one more time with this. So I want to put it in leggings and I want to save it as what it is. So I'm going to tell it yes and then it'll close it for me. And since I closed it that way, I've got to close my program by clicking that red X now. So, all right, I have gone through all of the steps that you need to use to use Adobe effectively. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. I hope that now, anytime you're watching my other pattern projecting series videos, you're able to follow along with what I'm doing and don't have to question anymore, wait, what did she just do? What function was that? How do I do that? So. If you found this helpful, please hit like, please subscribe to my channel, make a comment down below. If there's something I forgot to cover or you have a brilliant shortcut that I don't know about, leave it in the comments. We all want to know. And please feel free to share this video if you need to answer a question somewhere in a group or anything like that. Thank you so much for all of the love and support you guys have given me. My channel is growing cr like crazy and I really appreciate that. Stay tuned for some more videos. I still have the interview with Missy Poor coming up. I still have my ultra short throw setup coming up and so many more things planned for this year. One of those things I have planned is a podcast with Kathleen Hutch from Sunny Mountain Patterns and that will be coming out really soon and we will let you guys know all about it as it gets a little closer but we've been recording some of our early episodes and I am so excited about that too. So. Thank you guys for all your support. Stick around for more great content. Thanks for watching my videos. Like, subscribe, and comment.